everyone, it's Juliette and today's beginner's corner piece is going to be Deuce Plant by Bergmeller. So I'm going to play it to you first so that you can see what it sounds like. So starting from the beginning, this left hand is in a way equally difficult as the hairbell that I did in my previous video um, because it's really hard to keep it even. So I'm just going to suggest the same technique for that as I did in my previous video to keep it even and that's to play each note twice, so like that. After a while, you'll find it's easier to play that in one continuous phrase rather than it ended up a bit disjointed and something like that. We don't want that. The second thing is that the melody in this piece um, is really important. A, because it's such a long continuous melody and throughout the whole piece it has to be phrased and it has to be legato and it has to all flow into one another. And not only that, but it crosses between the right hand and the left hand. So you start with it in the right hand at the beginning of the piece. And so on. And then by the fifth bar, we've gone into the left hand. And we have to create this seamless transition between the right hand and the left hand. So in the fourth bar, where we have the crossover, a way to practice it to make it sound even and to sound, because you don't want it to upset the ear, you don't want to make it sound like you're playing it with two different hands, you want to make it sound like you're playing the whole thing with one hand. So the way to do this is to play it with just one hand. So if you just play the whole melody from the beginning, to the point where the crossover is with the right hand and then you can see what you want it to sound like and then from there you can try and replace the right hand with the left hand where it's meant to be and make it sound nice. <laughs> I'll point out where the crossover bit is but taking it from the beginning you can go like this. You see I did that with my right hand instead of my left hand to see what kind of sound I wanted because it's a lot easier to play one continuous line with one hand. So once you experiment with that a little bit and you see how you want to play it with one hand, then you can try and slotting in the left hand where it should go. So to take from the beginning again. See, 
I made that seamless transition between the right hand and the left hand. It doesn't, if you're not looking, you can't tell that I swapped between the hands, but that's really important just to keep the whole phrase flowing throughout. Now when I played through the whole piece, um, I did the repeats that are in the piece. A, because you've got a first and second time bar, where on the, uh, the first time you play it, you play the first time, the first bar, and the second time you play it, you play the second bar. So that's one of the reasons why I did it, but also because this is such a short piece, and I think it's important to um, use the repeats to show variety. Now, as I said in my previous video, when you have two things, uh, two parts of a piece that are the same, a way that you can make them sound different is by playing uh, one of the times louder or softer than the other. It doesn't matter, but it's a nice idea to make it sound different. So for this piece, the simplest way and probably the way I'd actually recommend to do it is to um, probably just play the second time a bit louder than the first time. I think that that sounds better. It hasn't doesn't have to be overboard, but it does give it a nice sense of variety. Now moving into this second section where we have these staccatos like that. Um, the first thing is that this is the first time you have staccato in this piece, and it makes such a huge contrast with the legato, you know, or this legato that you had. But this is the first time you have short and spiky and you really want to play that out so in the bar leading up to it you've got to make sure that that sounds perfectly legato so that when you move on to the staccato bit it just it stands out kind of it sounds like a change and it sounds different so you want to make that distinction clear between the two the other thing with this staccato section is that it is so easy, through that one bar that you have staccatos, it's so easy to rush to the end. I'll, I'll show you what I mean, like, to do this. It's so easy to do, but you mustn't do it, because it sound, when, when you do that, it's because you want to make it sound like it's building up, it's building up to the end. And it, it does make it sound like it's building up to the end, but a more effective way to do it is just to use um, a crescendo, just to increase the volume. So if you just crescendo, but you keep the, the tempo steady, then it just sounds, it sounds so much better. Because if, when you're rushing it, it just, you do, it doesn't sound professional, to put it that way. So to play through that build up for you, and I'll show you what I mean. On my score, I'm assuming it will be on others as well, um, the phrasing shows that that actually ends on that note, and the next phrase starts there. Um, so I think that it's really important to just separate those two phrases a bit because there's a lot going on at that point. It's the climax, the, the volume's high, and if you imagine that it's like a singer, a singer is singing this bit, just imagine that the singer needs to take a breath, you know, between that and so, to show you what I mean, you've got... That was a bit exaggerated, but you don't want to make it blindingly obvious, you don't want the audience to be like, <gasps> because they feel the gap, but you, you don't want to just rush straight into it, because there's already a lot going on. Okay, so to finish with the ending, I think that for this piece it's really important to finish soft, to finish piano at the end here, um, just because that's the kind of atmosphere that this ending creates. Um, 
you've had this big build up. And when you get to the end, you, you just want to say, okay, that's it, that's over. This has been lovely. You know, with this ending that goes like this. You don't want it to finish. <laughs> like really loud because that's just not what it is. That's not what it's saying. It's a kind of gradual dying away, just saying you know, it's all over like one big sigh. So that's the first thing, I think it's really important that you finish nice and soft there. And the final thing is, this is kind of like a repeat of what we did with the melody in the beginning, but here you've got this crossover between the hands. And because that's what you finish on, it's really important to make that all sound flowing and it all runs into each other. You don't want to hear the bump between the two hands. So we're just going to use the same technique and we're going to play that whole arpeggio thingy. <laughs> with your right hand, just to see how you want it to sound and then you can copy that sound with the left hand. So you would do it like this. And that's actually hard because of how it's written, obviously it's written for the left hand, but if you can master that and get in your head how you want it to sound, then you can really easily copy it with the left hand and make it sound flowing and continuous. It, it's not easy, it does require work, um, but if you can really get that to sound like you're playing it with one hand, then it just sounds so much better. I really hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, turn my notifications on so that you don't miss another video, and have a lovely day, bye!